want to tell you the truth. You're going to be attacked, betrayed, exposed, and humiliated. Life is going to break you, and it's going to see how bad you really want it. That's the moment when you are truly alone. And what will you do then? Can you summon the will to fight on through all the pain and rise again? Who are you? That will be the defining question of your life. And I think you already know the answer. Because your pain is your power. You suffer so you can be much stronger. I don't know what that dream is that you have. I don't care how far-fetched it might appear to be. I don't care how disappointing it might have been as you've been working toward that dream. But here's what I know. That that dream that you're holding in your mind, that it's possible. Albert Einstein said, imagination is everything. It's a preview to life's coming attractions. Everything you imagine is a preview to a coming attraction. Once you understand that and quit looking at your imagination as hocus pocus, it opens up a wide range of things and possibilities. And if you're bold enough, if you're strong enough, if you can handle the pain, you can make it happen. You just can't quit in the middle of the journey. In every project, there's escape hatches. And if you don't bolt them close when the going gets tough, boom, away you go. When you make up your mind to do something, quitting should never be an option. If you're going to quit, quit when you're at your peak, when you're very, very successful. But don't quit because you're tired of paying the price. If you pay the price, the reward is going to be that much sweeter. I can accept failure. Everyone fails at some point, but I cannot accept not trying. When you've tried your best, when you've given 120%, you should never feel bad. You pick yourself up, you look at it from another perspective, you come up with another solution, and you go at it again. You're a problem solver, you're not soft, you're not weak, you don't quit, you don't surrender. You fall seven times, you get up eight. You chase after that thing you believe you deserve until you get it. And you let nothing stand in your way. You can't ever feel bad when you put forth 120%. You can't let the outcomes make you feel whack. You're not whack. You're a warrior. You won't always win, but you've got to always try. Absolutely refuse to quit when you know what you're doing, what you're studying, the price you're paying is going to pay enormous dividends in the long run. you got to learn to see the good in everything that could be negative. And sometimes tragedy strike not to hurt you, but to elevate you in a way if the tragedy never happened, you would never be elevated. So you got to say to yourself, I will learn to see the good in everything bad that happens in my life. These challenges, these tribulations, these things will make me stronger. With every decision comes a result. With every decision that comes an outcome. And so in order for you to make your dreams and goals become a reality, you gotta be a great decision maker. It's one thing to talk about your dreams, but it's another thing to wake up when you know you're supposed to wake up. To try again when you failed for the hundredth time. To say no to quitting when your body is screaming that you stop. Those decisions, they are the path to your dream. There will be nobody in this world that will stop you from becoming what you want to become except you. If you walk out of this room today, you owe you to make good decisions. Because when you make bad decisions, you destroy you. You're killing you. You're destroying you. And I told you that if you make good decisions, you reap the benefits of it. Many of us feel like right now there's a mountain in front of you that seems immovable. But I'm telling you, the power of the Good choices, the power of hard work, tenacity, refusing to quit, refusing to say I can't or I give up and I quit, but beginning to say in the really believe I can, I must, I will, I refuse, I won't be defeated. Nothing in front of me is going to stop because I can control me. I can control the controllable and that's how hard I work. That's my desire to refuse to quit no matter what. I will not give up until I achieve my dream. To anyone out there that's listening, that's started to go down, down in that hole, trapped in the chains of depression or addiction or rage, you're going through a tough time. 
Maybe you're walking through real depression. Maybe you are in a valley today that you've experienced the worst failure of your life and you are on the verge of giving up. Maybe you're here today and your marriage is on the rocks. Maybe you're here today and you're dealing with anxiety on a daily basis. You know what it's like to be in a lonely, dark place. You know what it's like to want to quit. You know what it's like when the pressure's overwhelming, when people expect your best, but you're at your worst. That is a moment of choice. That is a moment of decision. What will your response be? Are you going to sit back or are you going to step up? Adversity creates the perfect moment for audacity. It's in your adversity. The thing that comes out of you is what defines you. When life is squeezing you and pressure is on you, what's really inside of you? See, there's some people in this room right now that you need to hear this loud and clear. You need to get this in your spirit because I don't know what you're walking through, but some of you right now, you are in a tough season. An event has happened and something's happened and maybe you have failed. But I want to remind you that failure is not final, it's formative. It is part of the process. It's part of the journey. Your failure matters as much as your success. How do you think you're going to grow if you don't ever fail? Yet some of you have failed and you have decided, well, guess what? I'm a failure. No, failure is an event. It is never a person. Just because you failed doesn't mean that you're a failure. In fact, failure is actually fuel for your future. The way that you grow, the way that you advance. You have to fail in order to succeed. The darker the night, the brighter the morning. This too shall pass. You're going to get through this thing. You might not be in control of the storm, but you can have the courage to face the storm to say, I'm not going to back down. I'm not going to run away. I'm going to walk through this thing because I believe this thing is leading me to another miracle. You see, the fight's not over if you've been knocked down. It's only over if you quit. If you make the decision to get up one more time, I'm telling you, you will win the fight. None of us ever get through this life without heartache, without turmoil. We're all going to fail at something. Everyone's failed at something. Life is a trial. And trials are never supposed to be easy. Life is hard. It's hard handling the tragedies of life. When you're working on something and, and you put everything you have in it and it doesn't work out, you lose your money and other people's money. It's hard. It is okay to be scared. It is okay to cry. But giving up should not be an option. And it doesn't matter how you get knocked down in life because that's going to happen. All that matters is that you got to get up. Because when you fail, you get up and then you fail and then you get up and that keeps you going. That's how humans are strong. Failure is an option, but giving up is not. Find a way. If you believe and you have faith and you can get knocked down and get back up again and you believe in perseverance as a great human quality, you find your way. You gotta have that resiliency over and over again. You gotta make a commitment to keep stepping up to the plate and swinging for the fences. Every day, whenever you do what you do, swing for the fences. Understanding when you swing for the fences, sometimes you'll miss. Did you know Hank Aaron had twice as many strikeouts as he had home runs? But he kept swinging for the fences. Most times he missed. But when he hit it, he knocked it out the park. When it's your shot to do what you do, keep swinging and keep striving. Change is going to happen in your life. Setbacks are going to happen. But a setback is nothing but a setup for comeback. The champions, it's not the potential, it's not their genetics. It's their perseverance to always show up, always willing to fail, because in failure, that's part of success. Success is not a marathon of life with just ups. Success is formulated through failures, through facing your fears, through falling down and getting back up. That's what creates the champion. Did you know that less than 1% of people 
are naturally extraordinarily gifted at something. Think genius, think savant. Do you know what that means for us, the other 99 plus percent of people? If we're going to do anything great in this life, it is going to require discipline. That's the truth. If you are going to accomplish anything extraordinary with the days on this planet, it is going to require you pushing through the discomfort and embracing the grind and disciplining yourself. If you want to live your best life, your absolutely best life, you got to do me a huge favor. You got to watch them choices you make. People make bad choices. They wake up another, make another bad choice. They make another bad choice. Now they got a habit of bad choices. And they like, how do I get here? Choices. How do I get here? You trying to get to certain places, but you ain't making the choices that's going to get you there. You all in your feelings. The cause of laziness is a craving for comfort. It's wanting comfort Ultimately, your problem is not laziness. It's the worship of comfort which produces laziness. It's that I don't want to do anything that I don't want to do. It's believing this lie that if it doesn't come completely natural to me, if it's not easy, then I shouldn't have to do it or maybe I'm doing the wrong thing. You have to make a choice. Either you're going to resort back to your old place and remain comfortable and miss the opportunity, or you're going to have to want it bad enough to get out of your comfort zone. You can lie to yourself and then you don't need discipline. You can tell yourself everything's okay and then you don't need discipline. You can tell yourself, you can lie to yourself and say that you're winning and then you don't need discipline. But if you tell yourself the truth, if you tell yourself the truth that you know you could be better, you know you could do more, if you tell yourself the truth, you won't have to find discipline. Discipline will find you. The greatest version of you is not the I can do anything version of you. The greatest version of you is the disciplined version of you. The greatest version of you is the version that has parameters. No, I don't do that. I don't drink that. I don't go there with these people. I'm focused. I have a prize that's in front of me. I know what I'm supposed to do and that ain't it. I have to stay right here. You can become godly through discipline. Not easy, not just because you feel like it, that sometimes you have to honor the grind. If it don't scare me, I don't want to do it. If it ain't edgy and half crazy, I'm not interested in it. But if it's something that I can't pull off by myself, and I gotta stay up at night, and I gotta pray my way through it, then I'm ready to do it. Because nothing great comes without struggle. Excellence requires discomfort. There's got to be some type of discipline attached to whatever you want deliverance in. And what I'm telling you is the battle never changes. Every day, you have to get self-control. You will have to think and find creative ways to make the next move happen. Your next move is in between your ears. When your head shifts, your life is going to shift. You've got to begin to think about the things you want to materialize in your life on a regular basis and think about it repetitiously. Literally, the things that we obsess about become the things that we possess in our lives. Your mind is a weapon, and you've got to begin to use it and pick that weapon up and control it. Most people are out of control with their mind. They don't point it at something. They let the world point it, and they misfire all the time. So today, I want you to pick up that weapon that is your mind and begin to point it at the things you want. Becoming successful is a situation of development discipline, persistence, patience, grit, character traits that you don't just get, you are not f***ing born with. It's going to come down to you developing the ability to do the things that you don't feel like doing because you know that it's the right thing to f***ing do. So often, we want to blame circumstances for the way things are. We want to blame genetics for the reason we're kind of fat. We got all these problems. But might I suggest, the problem is the pattern of your response. 
But you can't change the product if you don't change the pattern. You can't change the way your career is going if you don't start changing your work ethic and your work habits and your inner relationships. You can't change your wisdom unless you change your input. Just a problem is the pattern. Whatever's going on is your fault. Really, it's your fault. Accept that, own it, and then deal with it. Every decision that you make has consequences. Are you making yourself better? Are you making yourself worse? Are you moving forward or are you moving back? Are you making progress or are you stagnating? Every little decision you make counts. And most people will not be successful. They will not reach whatever they wrote because when there's not anything emotionally attached to it, they're gonna quit and give up. Most people were closer than they ever thought they were to finishing that big thing, but they never finished it because they didn't feel like finishing it. Or they were doing it and it was pain. And most people quit in the pain because the pain hurts so bad that they don't know if they wanna keep going to get to go. Because you're gonna wake up most days and not feel like it. You're gonna wake up most days and not be pumped up. You're gonna wake up most days and not feel like doing it. But when you can get to a point that you do it anyway, then there's no way you won't reach any of your goals. You are not where you want to be, not because you need any more gifts. You don't need nothing else. You need to discipline yourself. You need to learn to tell you no. You keep talking about everybody else you can't tell no. You can't tell you no. You can't tell you stop. You can't tell you quit. You got to get to a point where you're disciplined. It's a muscle. The mind is a muscle. Emotion is a muscle. I don't negotiate with myself. Well, maybe we'll do it tomorrow. I'm gonna do this, or oh, let me wait two more minutes till I'm ready. There's none of that shit with me. For decades, I go, I say, we do. I'm not here to discuss this shit with my mind. There's mind, and then there's soul and spirit. And soul and spirit, my soul fucking knows. And when I say jump, you fucking jump. I'm not here to have a discussion with you. But you have to take control and train this brain. If you don't train this brain, it'll use you instead of you using it. Everyone wants some life hack that eliminates the need to do the work, but that does not exist. You have to do the work. You've got to hold the line. You've got to make it happen. What could you be if you worked as hard as you could? What could you be if you imposed real discipline in your life? I say you crank up the volume on that question. Max it out. And then go get some. People who win f***ing douche and people who lose talk sh you can win if you choose to learn the things that you need to do and then can do them. That's reality. That's the shit nobody wants to admit because admitting so means that you have to take responsibility for where you are currently. And you have to say, I am where I am currently because I didn't do X, Y, and Z. And guess what? That fucking hurts a little bit. But once you accept that truth, you are able to then move forward with the actions required to get you to where you want to go. You have no business being average, but now you justify it. You come up with these great reasons why you can't get up at five. You have these great reasons of why you have to do everything, why you don't execute, why you don't finish, why you don't follow through, why you say you're an exercise and you do it for about 10 days and you quit. You've got an excuse for why you're average. I guarantee you if you were humble enough, if you were hungry enough, if you really wanted what you said, you'd sit down and you'd study what you do and you'd say, I can do this better. But I have not exhausted all my time. I have not exhausted all my research. There's something missing. You're not where you're supposed to be. It's not going to take a lot, but it's a small gap. And the gap is called execution. If you want to execute just a little bit more, you'll be on a whole other level. You have to master the monotonous. It's the boring sh. It's the everyday sh. It's the regular sh. It means doing the sh that most people are too fing undisciplined to do day in and day out with perfection. Doing it better than everybody else. Doing it to the best of your ability. You have to remind yourself that these little things that you do are going to lead to the big things. Are you going to do your workout or are you not? Are you going to do your cardio or are you not? You think things are going to just go your way? Well, they're not going to just go your way. You got to make them go your way. You think things are going to just happen for you? Well, they're not just going to happen for you. You got to make them happen. Discipline your body. Free your mind. Get up early and go. 
get after it, and you will become the person you want to be. And you become that person through one small decision at a time. You might be smarter. Your family might come from privilege. Your daddy might own a company, but you will not outwork me. This top spot is number one. That's mine. Because not one of you can outwill me. You may have been born with more genetic prowess than I have, but you cannot outdetermine me. You can't outwill me. You can't outwant me. You can't outwork me. You can't outdesire me. The bigger your dream is, the harder to grind. You might have small beginnings. You might not have a lot of money. You might not have a lot of resources, but there's no excuse. And I need you to understand that the bigger your dream is, the earlier you're gonna have to get up. The longer you're gonna have to stay up. The more effort you're gonna have to put in. You know how hard I worked to get here? I put in too many hours. I sweat too much blood, too much tears. I worked hard to get here. Didn't nobody give me this. I didn't grow up with wealth. Didn't nobody pay me. I worked for this. Sweat, blood, tears. I earn every dime I get. I work for this. You will not outwork me because your height has nothing to do with my work ethic. Your face has nothing to do with my work ethic. You will not outwork me. You got to kill. What's going to separate you from everybody else? I do things to separate myself from everybody else. The passion that I have, the grind that I have when I do what I do. I got a different motor. I got a different grind. I'm always going to give it my 110%. That's the only thing I can ever say a solid day's work. If you guys do not do that, I promise you, your life will haunt you for the rest of your days. From today on, you play whatever your best game is, you play that level every single time. It doesn't mean you're going to score every time, but you can always give 120% effort. You can't dictate what kind of game you're going to have. You can't dictate how your body is going to respond to moving around, but you can dictate your effort. Your dream comes when you push. And I'm not give you no cookies and ice cream. Push. It's alive. It's inside. How do you know you feel it? You dream about it. You eat and sleep it every day. So push. Just push past the plate. Push. Don't quit. Push. And you push your way to success. You have a chance to control your destiny. All of us are created equal. Some of us just work harder. Some of us just grind. Some of us don't make excuses. Some of us don't give up and give in. What we do with the pressure is we say, I got to take it, and I got to take it to another level. Many of you have lost your competitive edge. Get your competitive edge back. Act like you playing basketball. Act like you playing football. Go in that doggone classroom. Compete. You're not giving 120. You're giving 70. You're giving 60. You're giving 50. And you won't with these people who've given sweat, who's given blood, who's given tears. You won't what they pay for, and it ain't free. You might be bigger than me, you might be faster than me, you might be stronger than me, but you will not outwork me. You get a breakthrough when you fight. That's the hardest part, because the breakthrough, that last 10%, is all mental toughness. It's time to unwrap the potential you can be. It's within you. And the people that have risen to that level were no different than any one of us. It's just they believed it, and they were willing to work their f***ing ass off to get it. It wasn't about the potential, it wasn't about the genetics, it was about the perseverance, and it was about being the hardest f***ing worker in the room. You realize that you have nothing left to talk smack about, and you will lose, and I will win. What if the truth is that changing your life is one away? One decision, one meeting, one conversation, one extra phone call, one extra rep in the gym. You start stacking up those one mores. That's the separator. In life, we don't get our goals. We get our standards. You meet somebody who doesn't have self-confidence, this is someone who's perpetually not keeping promises they make to themselves. You meet somebody with pretty good baseline confidence, you've met somebody who now keeps the promises they make to themselves. You meet somebody doing superhuman things, they keep the promises they make to themselves, and they do one more. There's a power to one more. When you start stacking up those one mores, not only have you put more contacts out into the universe, but you start believing, I'm doing something most people aren't willing to do, I'm fixing to get something most people aren't gonna get. I don't have that natural beauty or that natural talent or this gift for creativity or intellect or humor. I don't have any of those things. But what I got is I will outwork you. When it's 45 on the treadmill, I do 46. When it's supposed to be 20 phone calls, I make 21. When it's supposed to be an eight hour workday, I work nine. Whatever it is, I always do one more. And what that does is it makes me eventually think I'm doing things other people aren't willing to do, 
so I should get things other people aren't going to get. You've got to understand, it's not about what you were born with. It's not about what you were given, where you started, or even where you're going. It is entirely about what you plant at the center of your soul. How hard you're willing to go after something. How much focus you're willing to put in your life. And how often you come back to that level of intensity for who you want to be. You have to make a decision that nobody in your position will outwork you. Some people run faster, swim better, but mentality is mentality. You're not gonna outwork me, so I'm gonna catch up somewhere. If you are not that talented, you can beat them with time. You can get to the spot before they get to the spot. Get your butt up and get there. Every day is a new day. Every moment is a new moment. So now you have to go out and show them that I'm a different creature. Now, because I'm pissed off. For greatness. Because if you ain't pissed off for greatness, that means you're okay with being mediocre. There ain't no man in here okay with being just basic. And I dare you to exhaust yourself. I dare you to leave every single thing on the field one season. Everything. Walk off exhausted. Wins and losses come a dime a dozen. But effort, nobody can judge effort. Because effort is between you and you. Effort ain't got nothing to do with nobody else. I want you to know when you dream your dream that there are other people who are dreaming the exact same dream. When you said to yourself, this is what I want to accomplish, you're not the only person that wants to accomplish it. And now I ask you this question, what do you do when a thousand other people want exactly what you want? What do you do when you're not the only one that wants to make a million dollars in your company? You're not the only one that wants to be a CEO. What if you're not the only one that wants what you want? What if there are thousands of other people who want what you want? You have to outwork them. You've got to get up earlier. You've got to stay up later. You've got to execute and you've got to go from 70 to 120. How many of you can honestly look yourself in the mirror and say, I am doing my best. Because if you can, you're fucking lying to yourself. Your job right now and how you execute that job is going to create the success habits that you're going to need down the road. How you do one thing is how you do everything. If it's making fries, if you ain't making the best motherfucking fries every fucking time, guess what? You ain't gonna fucking make it. If you can't sweep the warehouse floor better than the next guy, you ain't gonna fucking make it. Because here's the truth. Losers always talk about how they hate to lose, but they don't do anything about it. But you know what winners do? Winners will do whatever the fuck it takes. Winners will show up and stay late every fucking day until they're winning. Winners will talk to anybody they can that can help them and take the lessons to heart and put them in play. Losers talk about hating to lose. Losers say they hate to lose. Losers talk about how they want to win. Winners do what the fuck it takes. And that means beating the next guy. If you aren't going to work at your job every day and looking at all the other motherfuckers and thinking, dude, I'm going to beat the shit out of all of you, you don't have what it takes. Winners want to be the best. Winners have pride in being dominant amongst their teammates. All men are created equal. Some just work harder. You want to know what it takes to succeed as bad as you want to breathe. It's what goes on when the cameras go off. Hard work, determination, and grit. You will not outwork me. I will get up earlier than you. I will go to sleep later than you. I will put in more hours than you. I will read more than you. I will grow. I will do whatever it takes. You got to eat it. You got to drink it. You got to sleep it like it has to consume who you are. And if you're going to be the best, the cream of the crop, if you're going to be the apex, you got to be it, not talk about it. That people know when they think about this area, that's something you do. That you eat and sleep that. And that you do that. You do that. And people know it. You got to be it. It has to consume you. It has to take over you. That when I see you without even knowing you, I ought to be able to look at you and from your ethos, I ought to see you are the best of the best. I ought to know what you're doing without you saying one word. It ought to illuminate from you. You've got to work on it. When other folk are having a good time, you've got to have the strength of character to concentrate, to read, to digest information. The stronger your mindset is, the greater your skill set is going to be. Michael and Kobe weren't the greatest athletes, but their mindset is what separates those individuals. Separate yourself. You playing against other teams and you doing exactly what they're doing. Separate yourself. Stop doing what they're doing. If you stop doing what they're doing, you're going to be a champion. Stop following. No more following.
No more doing what everybody else is doing. Set the dog on standards. It's time for y'all to set the standard. We can't be complacent and we can't take our foot off the enemy's throat. We are going to be relentless. We are not going to give him the chance to regroup. He will not get the chance to recover. We are not going to stop until there is nothing left to pursue. You've got to do more. You've got to become valuable. You've got to understand that what you get paid to do is the minimum. And everything on top of that is your investment in your future. Get out of bed, come here in the morning. Go on for it, or else sleep it. Put yourself in the opportunity to get that break. The more sh- you throw against the wall, something will eventually stick. It doesn't stick, dreaming you should die. The first step into making a dream a reality is waking the f*** up. I was never the strongest guy. I'm not the fastest guy. Not the smartest guy. But I will work. And I will work hard. I will be up when my competitors sleep. I will be up when my enemy is curled up in bed. I will be up getting after it. And I recommend that you do the same. People always say, you got to love the work. You got to love what you do. You don't have to love what you do. You got to be addicted to what you do. You got to be addicted to winning. You cannot work short hours. You got to work long hours. You got to work smarter and you got to work f***ing harder. It's the work that you put in, the time and effort, the dedication, the hours that nobody else saw here, the sacrifices. You have to be disciplined. You have to be obsessive. You have to be addicted to the result. At the end of the day, the person that will surrender is the person that didn't work as hard as the other person. You got to work harder than the other person. So just when you felt like you did that last rep and your muscles are saying, it's, it's, I can't do no more reps, you say, like, yeah, you got to do one more. Because right now, while you quitting, he might be doing five more. While you quitting and giving up, while you saying, all right, I did enough, it's time to rest, he might just be getting his all. If you want to be great, you want to be the best motherfucker ever at what you do, you're going to be misunderstood by everybody because you're going to be so obsessed and so driven to get there that's what it takes it takes every second of your fucking life anybody says balance yeah balance is important for a lot of fucking people but if you want to fucking go to that edge where people do not like you don't understand you you're in that spot of obsession and drive to be the best in the world at what you do you have to be unbalanced to find every bit of energy and strength that you have to pull it off I do things to separate myself from everybody else. The passion that I have when I speak. The grind that I have when I do what I do. What are you going to do to separate yourself? If you ain't got more heart than me, if you ain't been working harder than me, if you ain't sacrificed more than me, I'm going to destroy you. And I'm not retreating. I'm not running. I don't care what they say on paper. I don't care how many games you won. We live by this and we die by this. We don't retreat. You're not giving 120. You're giving 70. You're giving 60. And you walk with these people who've given sweat, who's given blood, who's given tears. You want what they pay for and it ain't free. It has everything to do with what time you wake up. It has everything to do with how you eat. It has everything to do with how you work out, how you prepare. It has every single thing to do with how you think. And when you want it as bad as you want to breathe, says, I'm willing to make any sacrifice. I'm willing to go through any pain. I'm willing to go through any suffering. I'm willing to go through whatever it takes. So when I get in there and it's me and him one-on-one, that I guarantee you at the end of it, I won't be the one that surrenders. And if you're going to be the best, the cream of the crop, if you're going to be the apex, you got to be it. It has to consume you. You can't get out of something, something that you're not willing to put into it. You have to put your everything, your everything, your mind, your energy, your effort, your discipline. Nothing is going to jump out the fire. If you don't throw something in there, it's not going to happen. You got to learn how not to give up or how not to give in. And you got to understand that greatness is within you. And you got to pull it out. You got to climb every mountain. You got to cry if you got to. But whatever you do, you cannot give up. You cannot give in. Nobody ever said it would be easy. I know greatness is within you and you got what it takes. I don't care what it costs. I will do whatever it takes to win. I'm going to fail. I'm going to fail. I'm going to fail. I'm going to fail and I will succeed. I'm speaking to the people. If you're going to make it, you've got to be willing to be the outlier. The weird one. Forget about fitting in. Forget about socializing with everyone. You need to stand out. When people don't understand you, you're doing it right.
time to stay focused, man. It is time. It is time to go from mediocre to meteoric. It's time to decide f clubs, f partying, f trying to fit in and socialize, rub elbows with everybody so people can stop calling you weird. Why are you so antisocial? Because I'm trying to get it. Why are you staying on the basketball court so much? Because I'm trying to get it. Why are you out there practicing in the hot sun when ain't nobody else out there? Because I'm trying to get it. Why are you not clubbing? Like every time I text you and invite you to go do something fun and cool, you always studying because I'm trying to get it. The more weird you are is a reflection of how committed you are to focusing on your sh molding and shaping and developing your ideas and your craft so that when it's time for you to make your rounds, you gonna fly. When you are misunderstood to the point where people think you're psycho and you're nuts and you're this and that, why are you in the fucking gym at one o'clock in the fucking morning? What's wrong? When people don't understand you anymore, you're in that spot of obsession and drive. To be the best at what you do, you have to be unbalanced to find every bit of fucking energy and strength that you have to pull it off. And it takes being fucking obsessed to where people think you're crazy. You still got work to do. Stay on that basketball court. Stay on that football field. F all the homies texting and calling and trying to make you feel bad about being so focused. It's grind season, homie. It's not about today. It's about the future. Do the work now and all of the sh that you could ever want to do for your family, your kids, your loved ones, it's all going to be on a whole nother stratosphere. You got to come out your comfort zone because your comfort zone is the deadliest place you will ever be. You should never feel comfortable. You should be happy and dissatisfied. You might outwork me for 30 days or 60 days or 90 days, but you ain't gonna beat me over a year. You can't outwork me over two years. I'm gonna get you eventually. I'm a dripping damn faucet. I just keep coming at you. I'm too damn tough to give up. Most people half-ass half their life all the time. I knew they were gonna get tired. They were gonna get down. They quit improving themselves. They start sleeping in. I'm not gonna do that stuff. I'm gonna get up early. I'm gonna keep getting wide. I'm gonna stay relentless. If you want to show me you want to win that bad, pack your calendar. You pack your calendar, that's how you show the world that you want to win because everything is based off of activity. It's very hard when you go up against somebody that shows up every flipping day where you sit there and say, take a damn week off, go on vacation. Why don't you slow down for a day or a month or two months or three months? Please, let me catch up. Because hungry people, they're just more urgent than everybody else. Oh. Oh, you don't need to work on weekends. Why do you work so hard at night? Why do you get up so early and do that? Why do you train so hard? Why are you reading all these books when we're out drinking beer? When you're obsessed, they're like, why are you going to be so crazy? Why can't you be satisfied? Why do you always got to get things so perfect? Why do you spend so much time here? When you're obsessed, people think you're nuts. Anybody ever tell you, hey, look, just be satisfied with what you got? No, don't believe them. Get them away from me. Because the attempt to get more makes you into something better. While they go party, you grind. While they go spend their money, you go make it. While they criticize and make fun of you, you work endlessly to shut them up with your results. Don't kill them with kindness. Torture them with success. The best revenge is massive success. You're going to go through many storms where your life is going to be hard. And it'll seem unbearable at times. There are types of storms. There are emotional storms where you're worried. Something that you hope won't happen or something that has already happened. With emotional storms, you can find yourself stressed out. In an emotional storm, you can find yourself depressed, mentally fragile because of the experiences, the turbulence that you have gone through. The state of this world can have you in a state of confusion and, and a heavy cloud over your life. It's very depressing. A storm is going to come. I don't care who you are, no one is exempt. It's called life, ladies and gentlemen. So how do you handle it when you're in the storm? You must have faith. You must have the faith to call forth those things that be not as though they were. The strength and the courage to make it through, the enduring power. The ability to persevere, to handle it, it will pad you. The inner power to overcome, to come back again. 
So in order to begin to prepare for the storm, you've got to go within and start working on yourself. You've got to get grounded. You've got to train your mind to serve you. Meditation is one of the ways in which you can do that. Reading is one of the ways that you can do that. Listening to music is one of the ways that you can do that. Exercise is one of the ways in which you can do that. Things that you can do to still your mind, to clear your thoughts so you can think. I had a program for myself. I have books that I read that inspire me, tapes that I listen to that fire me up. Because you're going to have sometimes low moments when you won't want to get out of bed. You just want to stay there. At times you won't want to come out the house. At times you'll be feeling bad and don't know why what's wrong. I don't know. Just leave me alone. The first tendency is to panic. When they said, your mother has breast cancer. I panic immediately. I start grieving and crying. I fell out of God's oh God, I can't handle this. I never thought this day would come. I can't deal with this pain. You got to talk to yourself sometimes. You hear me? You got to talk to yourself. And yes, I was scared. Leslie, get up. Get up, Leslie, get up. Come on, man. It's easy to have faith when mama's got her health and all is well. Come on, get up and come in the house. She needs us now. Come on, be a man. Come on in this room and face it. Be still. Know that all is well. To pull this through. And I made up my mind. I don't care what it takes. I don't care how many speeches I have to give, how many seminars I have to give. I know I ain't got the money. I know I don't have the education. But I ain't going to let that stop me. I'm going to do it. And yes, it's going to be hard, it's going to be difficult, and you get more no's than you do yes. But when you hold out, things will begin to happen. You won't even understand how. See, what the storm does, ladies and gentlemen, it empowers you. It strengthens you. When you go through a storm, when you come through that kind of experience and able to reclaim your life, you come back with a certain kind of power and you'll never be the same again after that experience. There are certain things when you go through those things and you come up out of those things, you come up a different kind of person, different spirit, different power, different energy that builds character. Don't ever say when you're going through some rough time, I'm going through a really bad, tragic time. No. So I'm going through a character building experience. Tough times never last, but tough people do. You should take pride in wanting to quit and not quitting. Hey, it's really hard right now, dude. You're really struggling right now. But here's the thing. Right now is when everybody else quits. Right now is when everybody else is going to fall behind. Right now is when everybody else decides to do something that's easier or faster or not as hard. And that's what gets you ahead. That's what gets you to have pride. Because those struggles, those feelings, those things that are difficult, they are there to test you. This pain, this conflict, this tragedy, this tribulation is the test. Don't fail it. Stay strong. Don't ever quit. Struggle is a privilege. Hardship is a privilege because those struggles, those hardships, those things that you face will turn you into an unstoppable motherfucking machine. So if you want to create super high confidence, super high self-esteem, super high momentum, that feeling I'm super powerful, I'm invincible, I'm the fucking man or I'm the fucking woman, you have to take pride in not quitting when other people are going to quit. You have to take pride in executing your job to the very best of your ability when everything around you is going wrong. That's what gets you out of the storm. You can't just focus on this moment. You've got to hold the vision. Hold the vision of things improving. Hold the vision of your health coming back. Hold the vision of being financially independent and debt free. Hold the vision of your relationships working out. Hold the vision of everything being all right because it'll give you power, give you strength, give you faith, give you patience, give you perseverance. It'll give you the ability to snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. And when you discipline your emotions and you don't allow them to control you, when you tell yourself, I'm in charge here, I set the course for my life, these storms that I face, they do not have power over me. When you declare that to yourself, the limits for you become non-existent. There will be times when you will feel alone, when you'll feel deserted, when you'll feel weak and you'll doubt yourself and other people will doubt you and you ask yourself, am I crazy? Maybe I don't have what it takes. That's going to happen. But I'll tell you something. Wouldn't it be a shame for you to stop when you've come this far? Who on this earth 
would still be going right now. You are. You are. You're still alive. You're still breathing. And if you're still breathing, that means you've still got some fight left in you. If you are still alive, there's still room for improvement. There's still room to grow and be better. Things are going to get harder. Things are going to get tougher. So what you need to do is you need to get harder and you need to get tougher. You will be tested. And how you face that test determines the rest of your life. The one mentality that you must have in life is that regardless of what's in front of you, you still must grind. I fail at most things I do, but still I grind. I don't want to do half the shit I do, but still I grind. When you want something, don't expect everybody to say, oh, you want this? Oh, great, we want to give this to you. No, many doors will be closed in your face. Many loans that you will want. And they'll say, no, you don't have enough credit. And most people will give up. But you've got to decide that I'm going to be fearless. I refuse to be denied. And I'm going to go all out. Put yourself in a position where you can't retreat, where it's do or die, sink or swim. Here's what you'll find out. You'll develop incredible swimming skills. Through the inspiration of desperation, you'll become more creative than ever before. Throw your whole self into it. If you dare to be great, if you dare to do something that you've never done before, if you dare to go to limits that you've never went to before, they will remember your legacy forever. Don't let nobody steal your dream. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop running towards your dream. Their rough times are going to come, but they have not come to stay. They have come to pass. Don't say I'm having a bad day. Say I'm having a character building day. When you have fear, fear makes you think in ways you shouldn't be thinking. When you have fear, fear makes you speak in a certain way. But when you have faith, you don't need to count. When you have faith, you don't need to go outside. When you have faith, you don't need to see how many horses. When you have faith, you don't need to see how many armies. When you have faith, you don't need to see how many swords. When you have faith, you don't need to count no shields. When you have faith, you just believe that it'll happen. You concentrate on this opportunity. You don't worry about tomorrow. You concentrate on this opportunity with all your might, with all your soul, with all your heart. You focus on this, and tomorrow will take care of itself. Write down at least five reasons on why you won't give up, what's going to make you unstoppable, why you must be unreasonable, because logical, practical thinking says you can't do it today. But if you want to produce unreasonable results in your life, you've got to be an unreasonable person. You've got to be an uncommon person. It's very important for you to believe that you are the one, that you are entitled to this. You're supposed to have this. This is your calling. This is your time. When you no longer focus on the obstacles, when you no longer care what people think or what they might say when you no longer find the need to seek their approval it's done when the pressure within you is greater than the pressure outside of you the only thing that i see that is distinctly different about me is i'm not afraid to die on a treadmill i will not be outworked period you might have more talent than me you might be smarter than me you might be all of those things you got it on me in nine categories but if we get on the treadmill together there's two things you're getting off first or i'm gonna die it's really that simple i don't have that natural beauty or that natural talent or this gift for creativity or intellect or humor i don't have any of those things but what i got is i will outwork you when it's 45 on the treadmill, I do 46. When it's supposed to be 20 phone calls, I make 21. When it's supposed to be an eight hour workday, I work nine. Whatever it is, I always do one more. And what that does is it makes me eventually think I'm doing things other people aren't willing to do, so I should get things other people aren't gonna get. You've gotta understand, it's not about what you were born with. It's not about what you were given, where you started, or even where you're going. It is entirely about what you plant at the center of your soul. How hard you're willing to go after something, how much focus you're willing to put in your life, and how often you come back to that level of intensity for who you want to be. You have to make a decision that nobody in your position will outwork you. Some people run faster, swim better, but mentality is mentality. You're not gonna outwork me, so I'm gonna catch up somewhere. If you are not that talented, you can beat them with time. You can get to the spot before they get to the spot. Get your butt up and get there. 
You gotta kill. What's gonna separate you from everybody else? I do things to separate myself from everybody else. The passion that I have, the grind that I have when I do what I do. I got a different motor. I got a different grind. I'm always gonna give it my 110%. That's the only thing I can ever say a solid day's work. If you guys do not do that, I promise you, your life will haunt you for the rest of your days. From today on, you play whatever your best game is, you play that level every single time. It doesn't mean you're going to score every time, but you can always give 120% effort. You can't dictate what kind of game you're going to have. You can't dictate how your body is going to respond to moving around. But you can dictate your effort. No dream come when you push. And I'm not going to give you no cookies and ice cream. Push. It's alive. It's inside. How do you know you feel it? You dream about it. You eat and sleep it every day. So push. Just push past the fight. Push. Don't quit. Push. And you push your way to success. You have a chance to control your destiny. All of us are created equal. Some of us just work harder. Some of us just grind. Some of us don't make excuses. Some of us don't give up and give in. What we do with the pressure is we say, I got to take it, and I got to take it to another level. You get a breakthrough when you fight. That's the hardest part because the breakthrough, that last 10% is all mental toughness. It's time to unwrap the potential you be. It's within you. And the people that have risen to that level were no different than any one of us. It's just they believed it and they're willing to work them keen ass off to get it. It wasn't about the potential. It wasn't about the genetics. It was about the perseverance. And it was about being the hardest working worker in the room. You're going to have ups and downs in life. Things are going to go wrong. You're going to lose businesses. You're going to lose jobs. You're going to break up. And there are times when you get injured and there are times when you get mentally defeated and you feel like you don't want to do it anymore. And those days go on and on and on. Things are going to go wrong. And what you need to do is to keep moving forward. No matter what happens, keep moving forward. We all go through pain, get a reward for yours. There's some things in life you don't need no degree for, you don't need no money for, you don't need no support for. There's some things in life you just gonna get through when you tell yourself, I'm gonna get through this. I need you to look at that sickness that's going on in your life right now, whatever it is. I want you to say, I can beat it. I can beat it, I will beat it, I must. You think it's gonna be easy, forget about it. All right, don't even try to be successful, it's a wrap. It's not going to be easy, but I want you to feel that pain going through your body. And as pain leaves your body, guess what's going to take its place? Success. And when that thing tells you to quit, you look at it in his eye and say, I ain't going nowhere. I will break you before you break me. You will not defeat me. You will not destroy me. I'm unbreakable now. Life is going to see how bad you want what you say you want. Impose your will on it. Life will give in to you if it knows you're serious about whatever it is that you're trying to do. Life will give in to you. Whenever you start, you make sure you finish. If you do not kill me, you will not stop my drive. No petty adversity will not stop me. I have to complete every mission that I set out on. Your mind and attitude is all you need to be successful. That's all you need. You don't need to be born with a silver spoon in your mouth. You don't need money. You don't even need folks that like you. As long as you believe in you, you got the right mindset, you got the right attitude, we can make it happen. I don't care what's going on around you because it's not what happens around you that determines your success. It's what happens inside you. And you can't control the elements, but you can control your attitude and you can control your mindset. You get one shot, opportunity comes once in a lifetime. You better make the kind of decisions that's gonna take you to the NBA. You better make the right decisions that's gonna take you to the NFL. You better make the right decisions that are gonna land you the next best rapper, the next business tycoon. It's one thing to talk about your destiny. It's one thing to dream about your destiny. But it's another thing to wake up when you know you're supposed to wake up to write when you don't feel like writing that paper, to say no to that party, saying no to quitting when you still got a hundred more shots to make, saying no when your body said don't stop, but you put in 50 more push-ups. You can't just talk about it, 
You gotta be a body. Your brain is the most powerful weapon in the world. Your brain is the only thing you have when you're going through depression, when you're going through hard times, you're going through death. Real life sh You're alone. There's 24 hours in the day where you're alone in this brain. And your brain is talking to you in all kinds of ways. And it wants to control you and pull you in these different pockets. If you can't control your own brain and your brain controls you, you're you gotta tell your brain where you wanna go and how you wanna go and how you wanna get there. You gotta control it. If not, it's over. And all I knew back then was hard work. The only way anything gets accomplished, I can't get this paragraph, I can't remember what the f**k's in this paragraph to pass this test to get in the military. Read again. Still not getting it, read again. But if you're not getting it, write it out. And that's how I started learning. Okay, well, I can't, I gotta write out every f**king thing I do. And then write it out again, and write it out again. And guess what happened? I got it. I got it. I can't swim. I'm negative buoyant. Go back again. I can't swim. Go back again. Go back again. Go back again. I got it. I realize if I keep going back and going back and going back, your mind will say, okay, we're going to figure it out. Because he is not going to stop. If you're a student in school, try harder, study harder, and focus more. You got this. That athlete that's out there, and you're not training how you're supposed to. Go 10, 15 minutes harder. Five, 10 more reps. You have to work when no one's watching. You have to train like there is no tomorrow. Day after day after day. You can improve just a little bit every day. That's the effort you need to be great. That's the sacrifice that you have to put in in order for you to get to the next level that you need to be in. If you can't stick to something for five f***ing days, you deserve to have a shitty life. You deserve to get your ass kicked. You deserve to be miserable. We're talking about five f***ing days. We're not talking about 50 years. We're not talking about the five years it probably takes to build something worthwhile. We're not talking about the five months it could take for you to lose 100 pounds. We're talking about five f***ing days. And you can't even stick to it for that. So what the f*** do you think you deserve? You deserve exactly what you get. And that's the truth. That's the things your friends won't tell you when you're bitching and moaning about how your life sucks on Friday night, drinking a fucking brewski with your boys. That's the sh your mom won't tell you when you're sitting in your mom's basement playing fucking video games, when you should be reading or improving or working out or doing something. It doesn't matter how you feel. It doesn't matter how frustrated or pissed or angry or depressed or upset you are. All that matters is that you do what needs to be done on a daily basis over and over and over again. And if you do that sh and it gets done, it's irrelevant how you feel. And I can tell you this, if you do that sh for long enough, you're gonna feel a lot better about your life than you do right now. You got the little voices in your head. And you know what they're saying? They're saying, it's okay. You've done enough. Take a little rest. It's fine. You can take the day off. You don't need to go hard. That's what those little voices are saying. But you've got another voice in your head that's asking you a question. It's asking you, what could you be? What could you be? What could you be if you worked as hard as you could? What could you be if you imposed real discipline in your life? What could you be? I said you crank up the volume on that voice. Crank up the volume on that question. Max it out. So easy to put things off. So easy to say, you're gonna do it tomorrow. Well, I want you to reprogram your brain and tell yourself that tomorrow is not a viable option. Tomorrow doesn't work. You do it today. You get it done today. That's what you do. Stop rationalizing. Stop making excuses. Stop telling yourself little watered down assessments of where you're really at. Tell yourself the truth. Are you making yourself better? Are you making yourself worse? Are you moving forward or are you moving back? Are you making progress or are you stagnating? Make the decision. Yes or no? Are you going to work out today? Yes or no? Are you going to win? Yes or no? 
Don't allow for any gray area in there. Get rid of the debate. And you know the right decision to make. So go and make it. Now, if you know what you're worth, then go out and get what you're worth. But you gotta be willing to take the hits and not pointing fingers saying you ain't where you wanna be because of him or her or anybody. Cowards do that and that ain't you. You're better than that. I'm trying to tell you, you can win. You can win. Despite the circumstance, you can win. Despite the adversity, you can win. Despite the situation, you can win. Despite how much money you got in your bank, you can win. Despite the fact if your parents in your life or not, you can win. Despite the fact that you started behind, you can win. You can pull it off. You can't be good and be a legend. You can't be great, really, and be a legend. You got to be phenomenal. I want you to push for legend. It is the process of the grind that shapes you and forms you. It's not the game. You think you become a champion on the field? You don't. You become a champion when ain't nobody watching you. You're doing your own drills in your own way. You're doing what coach tell you to do and you're doing your own stuff. You become a champion in the dark when ain't nobody looking. You don't become no champion when you put no dog on helmet on. You become a champion the way you eat. You become a champion the way you think. You become a champion in your grind when nobody knows what you're doing. When you put in those extra reps, when you watching those videos and you getting inspired, when you change your music and you just get on stage and you shine, it's the process that makes you sweet.